By 2060, which is 40 years since 2019, we would be living as interplanetary species, traveling between Moon and Mars. In 2017, the space sector is worth about $260 billion. In 2026, it would be $558 billion. So it would be no surprise to you that in 2017, Director General Werner of the European Space Agency made an announcement that we will go back to the moon and settle. And currently, there are about 60 spacefaring nations working together on the moon village. So it would appear to be a logical step since the successful developments of the International Space Station for us to all go out back to the moon. But it's not going to be so simple, and there are many factors that we need to take into account. For example, where would we get the resources to do that? Well, we could start with the resources on the moon, such as water, ice, metals, minerals, and it would take a whole scale production. Perhaps initially, it might take three months to just settle in, to create a dome for the astronauts and for our crew, and then much longer. There are many factors to consider, as mentioned before, psychological, emotional, physical, and of course, we have to figure out what kind of robots, what kind of avatars are we going to use to make it easier, cheaper, and efficient for us. And of course, there are many other factors, such as environmental factors, that we need to take into account because of the harsh risk environment. At the Moon Village Association in 2017, it was concluded that the Moon Village is not just one location, or it is a traditional space project, but rather it is a conceptual framework, a series of planned activities in outer space. So the aspirations that I'm talking about is something we could compare from Earth to the Moon. It may well be the case that the initial space are scientists and astronauts, or engineers, so be it. And there are many responsibilities in space, not just to the individual, but to the collective. And we need to consider where we're coming from. The international regime currently under international law is that the space, outer space, is for peaceful purposes only, and hence there are no weapons of mass destruction and certainly non-militarization on usage of outer space, the moon, and celestial bodies. So what factors and scenarios would we perhaps encounter? So what kind of legal developments, space systems, would we need to think about? So we can talk about transportation systems, infrastructure, co-creation, co creation, creation um, construction, and what kind of resources would you think about and need to obtain? Imagine living on the moon. What kind of house rules would we have? What kind of code of con conduct would you create? So for instance, sitting in the comfort of your seats, you are comfortable in your country and jurisdiction, but out on the moon, we have no rules governing the individual or even certain states. So the idea of community and coexistence is not new. We've already experienced that even right now, living on Earth. But the question in outer space is when the conditions are very harsh, could we be ex expected to extend the same kind of help and assistance as if we were living on Earth? If you think about it, on Earth, if someone is drowning, do you have a moral obligation to save them? Do you have a legal obligation to save them? Now, the answer is yes, you have a moral obligation to save them, but in terms of legal obligation, no. So then the question is, well, it depends on the circumstances, whether you have a contractual relationship such as that of a doctor and a patient. This idea that in, in space, in the future, where we have robotics and we're living with avatars and AI systems, the question is, do we have any obligations to them? Let me give you an example. Currently, we heard about limited robotics, but in the future, when they are fully autonomous, they may even have consciousness. Do we have an obligation to them in outer space, in helping them, in assisting them? And furthermore, it would be interesting to ask those questions now than wait till we're in outer space. So there are many possibilities. To give you an example, let's say I'm a human being and out there in the moon, we are dealing with robots, avatars, and AI systems. I subcontract them, 
So the relationship becomes a sort of employer-employee relationship. There is a contractual relationship. So if something happens to this robotic system, then there is an obligation for me to assist them. Or we can take it a step further. Is there any obligation whatsoever when we're out of space, be it human, robot, avatar, or AI system? These are important questions. And furthermore, let's go one step further. Let's say an avatar, by definition, is an extension of oneself. Then could you be responsible for anything developed, created, or actioned on when you are based on Earth and the action is on the moon? Will we need to create different laws to govern this kind of behavior? On Earth, usually we need evidence to, have, to substantiate any claims. But in outer space, how can we assess that? To be fair, it is probably impossible to actually assess realities that happen out on, in, on the moon when we're based on Earth. So what does it mean? Does it mean we need to create a new moon system? Just a system? Does it mean we need to send judges up to space? Or do we assess the cases back on Earth? Or how about we create an AI system where we digest all the case law on Earth and send it up to space? Or do we just start from scratch and say, let's just see what happens on the moon and create the laws and governance system depending there? How do we ensure law and order on the moon? Do we send the police up on the moon? Or are we going to be self-governing individuals? How about sustainability? How about, do we need to set up a UN office of the moon? What if Society 5.0 is based on four pillars? That which was founded by the International Space University Space Summer Program 18, where the Humanities Law and Policy Group talked of four factors, influence, interdependentness, emotional well-being, and also sense of belonging. How would we ensure the transition from Earth to Moon? And how would it differ in terms of values like equality and inclusivity? The Moon is like a new start, a new possibility for regenerating and reinventing ourselves in another planet. As a lunar inhabitant, wouldn't we want to live in a society that is safe, respectful, and that we care for one another? How would we make decisions? Would it be by vote, consensus, or would Earth have the choice to veto us? On Earth, we have governments that provide clean parks, recycling, and also libraries and such services. But what about the moon? Would it be us? Would it be robots, avatars? Who would be responsible for that? And how about other responsibilities on Earth as in on the moon? By 2060, as a fully-fledged ecosystem, we would be looking at sustainability in the same way that we would look at on Earth. We would think about recycling. We would look about food sufficiency. All these things that matter to us right now on Earth. By Society 5.0, we can envisage ourselves living in a fully automated society, living interactively with robots, avatars, and AI systems. We then have to ask ourselves, how would digital AI systems transform us? How will it change us? For the Moon Society, be it 300, 3,000, 300,000 people, we need to ensure that there is a system or a way to govern so that it is flexible and most likely independent of Earth. One of the questions that we might ask ourselves, well, what about legal status, ownership, and what type of contracts will we engage in when we're on the Moon? The very matters that concern thinking about going to the Moon apply on Earth, such as migration, human rights, population density, food scarcity. These are very important questions that we all have a choice to make. Currently, there are a handful of organizations looking at the governance of the moon. And there are lots of questions that need to be fleshed out, which we don't know. And because we don't know, it is so important for us here as a collective voice to take part in the discussions and engage in the conversations of the moon village. Thank you.